Good afternoon, everybody. You're very welcome here today. We're coming live to you from the beautiful Solstice Arts Theatre in Navan, County Meath, home to the Royal County. And we're delighted to be here today for the official launch of the Healthy Age Friendly Homes programme. My name's Catherine McGuigan. I'm the Chief Officer in Age Friendly Ireland, and I'm your MC for today. And in order to give you the welcome address and the official welcome address, I'm delighted to call on our newly elected Cahorlock from Meath County Council, Councillor Sean Drew. Uh, we know that Councillor Sean has a keen interest in issues affecting older people, and he's absolutely delighted that this is one of his early events um, in his new chain of office. So welcome, Councillor Drew. Good morning, everyone. As Cahirlach of Meath County Council, it is my pleasure to welcome you all today to this virtual launch of the first phase of the National Healthy Age Friendly Homes Programme. I would like to give a special and very warm welcome to both Minister Peter Burke, Minister of State with responsibility for local government and planning at the Department of Housing, Heritage and Local Government, and to Minister Mary Butler, Minister of State for Mental Health and Older People at the Department of Health who will officially launch this new and innovative programme today. I also welcome our speakers, Meath County Council Chief Executive Jackie Maguire and Andrew Hannigan from Slanshire Care in the Department of Health. I would like to thank Belinda and the team in Meath County Council for welcoming us today to the beautiful Solstice Arts, Arts Theatre, one of Meath County Council's finest public buildings, of which we all in Meath County Council are very proud of. I welcome our online attendees from across all sectors and thank you in advance for joining us today to celebrate this milestone occasion. Today is a very exciting development for local authorities as it marks a unique partnership arrangement between local government and Slauncher Care in the Department of Health. The Healthy Age Friendly Homes Programme, funded by Slauncher Care and hosted by Meath County Council, through the Age Friendly Island Shared Service, harnesses the great collaborative relationship between local government and health. Throughout the pandemic, we have seen evidence of what can be achieved through partnership, working for the good of all our citizens. Today is further evidence of that. Through this programme, we are collaborating with nine other local authorities for phase one of the programme and other critical partners, including the HSE, the Sustainable Energy Authority, Department of Climate Environment, Climate and Communications, and Maynooth University in the delivery of this innovative programme. A core function of local authorities is to manage housing and planning for housing and development. With the Healthy Age Friendly Homes programme, we have an opportunity to enhance our services so that our housing provision enhances the development of homes that are work for people of all ages. While local authorities have an extensive track record in the infrastructure of housing, making a house into a healthy, age-friendly home requires more tailored supports. A home is something that fits your specific needs. A home is a warm and comfortable, supportive environment. Home refers to the place where you live and feel that you belong to. When we think of the name healthy, age-friendly homes, we think of how housing can support people to have good health and how it can support changing needs across the life course. A major thrust of Slauncher Care is to support health and well-being and to, prevent, to put in place preventative measures to reduce pressure on our health system. This is exactly what Healthy Age Friendly Homes aims to deliver, a programme of interventive work helping older people to access supports to mitigate risk to their health and well-being. Healthy age friendly homes will help to address health inequalities by providing targeted supports to older adults across all tenure types. Elective representatives are hugely, hugely supportive of the age friendly programme in Ireland in representing the interests of older citizens in our communities. Across the country, many elected representatives support the national age friendly programme by sitting on age-friendly alliances, taking part in research and consultation, and participating in events such as walkability audits and championing local initiatives of which thousands have rolled out over the last decade. With this new Healthy Age-Friendly Homes programme, elective rep representatives 
have a key role to play in referring citizens into the programme. Through our representative roles, we often have occasion to meet older citizens in the community who have issues with housing or need information about services and supports. The Healthy Age Friendly Homes programme will be an excellent vehicle to signpost older people to the range of services available through the local authority, other state agencies and community and voluntary groups. I particularly welcome and support the fact that elected members are part of the stakeholder engagement group in the initial nine sites across the country. As public representatives, local councillors directly assist the older people, those with disabilities, in applying for local authority housing adaptation works grants and the warmer home scheme applications. I know personally one of the most satisfying aspects of my role as a county councillor is the ability to help vulnerable constituents in firstly awareness of, then in making applications for, and finally seeing the grant works completed, thus enabling so many of our older people to continue living independently in their own homes. In this regard, I want to thank the Minister and their departments for the annual funding provision to local authorities, specifically for the Housing Adaptation and Older Persons Grant Scheme. And we take this opportunity to respectfully request that consideration be given to increasing the level of funding under the new Housing for All Homes, as its practical benefits relative to the financial cost is obvious. In conclusion, I want to acknowledge how delighted we in Mead County Council are to be hosting the National Age-Friendly Island Shared Service on behalf of the local government sector across Ireland. In that regard, I wish to thank our Chief Executive and all my elected colleagues for driving this programme that is the first fully affiliated age-friendly country in the world, an accolade, an accolade bestowed to us by the World Health Organisation. I thank all the staff in the Shared Services Office and indeed Mead County Council who have worked so hard to get us to where we are today. Thank you and goodbye for now. Thank you, Kehorlock. And it's great that we were able to mention the housing adaptations. It's such a worthy program and such a, you know, it has really enabled so many people to, um, to stay at home and it'll be a core part of the Healthy Age Friendly Homes program. So thank you for taking the time to do that welcome address and, and to reference that program specifically. So next in line, we're going to have Andrew Hannigan from Slonja Care. In advance of that, uh, Andrew's going to say a few words and then we're going to have a lovely video that will capture um, the Healthy Age Friendly Homes programme and give you at home, particularly a viewer's um, perspective on what it is that we're trying to do. We've been very, working very closely and collaboratively with Slauncha Care. Um, we'd like to take the opportunity in advance to thank Executive Director Laura McGahey for her work to date and her collaborative nature with us to date. And we're delighted that Andrew is here to say a few words and to open up the overview of the programme. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Catherine. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm delighted to be here today on behalf of Slange Care and the beautiful Solstice Theatre here in Navan to launch this new and exciting programme. Slange Care is, as you know, the all-party Oireachtas policy, which sets out the vision to deliver a health and social care system for the population of Ireland. It is about delivering a safe, quality health and social care service that meets the needs of our growing population and our ageing population and that also attracts and retains the very best in healthcare clinicians, managers and staff. The aim is to deliver a universal health service that offers the right care in the right place at the right time. Since the publication of the Slaunch Care Report in 2017 and the establishment of the Implementation Office in late 2018, we have made, st made steady progress in implementing key reforms, including in the provision of care for older people. For instance, through the Slaunch Care Integration Fund, we have supported a number of projects around the country which are now enabling older people to enjoy a better older age at home. It is also providing integrated care, which is leading to early intervention, hospital avoidance, self-management and education. We are now entering a new phase of Slaunch Care. With the publication in May of this year of our new Implementation Strategy and Action Plan 2021-23, 
which sets out our priorities and actions for the next three years. This new implementation strategy and action plan builds on the progress of Sláinte care reforms to date and, importantly, builds on the lessons learned from COVID-19. We've all been through a great deal in the past year and a half, and the pandemic has been extremely challenging for everyone in the health and social care sector. This has been felt especially by our older population. This pandemic has emphasised both the strengths and the gaps in our health system, and it has highlighted that there is a scope and a hunger for reform. We have seen some wonderful examples of innovation and change during this period, and yet we have clearly witnessed the impacts of the wider determinants of health on our older population, that is the social and environmental elements. As older people were encouraged to cocoon early in the pandemic, they were spending a lot more time in their own homes, often homes that were not supportive of their health and well-being needs. Over the next three years, Sláinte Care will be focusing on the key reform areas of improving safe and timely access to care and the promotion of health and well-being. The focus here is twofold. Firstly, the provision of timely care for people as close to their homes as possible and as safely as possible. And secondly, prevention initiatives to promote health and well-being. The Healthy Age-Friendly Homes programme being launched here today is entirely aligned to both of these goals and will be a key driver in their delivery. This programme will support people to live in their own homes with dignity and independence, to allow them to live longer, healthier lives in their own homes and to be and feel a part of their community. Over the first two years of this programme, our local coordinators will reach up to 4,500 homes across nine local authorities and carry out a needs assessment. By doing this, we will ensure that these people are living in a suitable living environment with the right levels of accessibility, size, safety, warmth and environment. This speaks very clearly to the goals of improving safe and timely access to care as close as possible to home. Healthy Age Friendly Homes is also very strongly linked to the second goal of prevention and health and wellbeing promotion that I mentioned. It seeks to prevent people from earlier premature transition into long-term residential care as a result of their living environment not supporting their health and wellbeing needs. One of the key principles of Sláinte Care is to promote health and well-being and through Healthy Ireland, the prevention arm of Sláinte Care, we are implementing a broad range of health and well-being policies and programmes. The focus is on prevention and increasing the degree to which diseases and conditions are prevented and detected early, allowing for successful intervention. Good health and well-being involves many factors and covers all aspects of life, from how you eat to where you live, where you work and where you study. And Healthy Age Friendly Homes sits alongside a number of settings-based health and wellbeing initiatives that Healthy Ireland and Slanch Care is now rolling out. This includes healthy communities, healthy campuses, healthy workplaces and now healthy homes as well. We will be taking a collaborative approach to this programme. The local coordinators will be working very closely with the service providers in their local areas, harnessing the health and social care supports that are already available to our older people that they may not be aware of. In establishing and rolling out the Healthy Age Friendly Homes, Sláinte Care will also be supporting the Retrofit Task Force and the SEAI to combat energy poverty. In line with the housing options for our ageing population policy statement, we will be enabling the use of support coordination through, through a collaborative approach to service delivery at a local level. And finally, we will be supporting the government's commitment to promoting an age-friendly Ireland. We have both a growing and an ageing population, and the research is clear. People want to live in their own homes as they age. We have a responsibility to ensure that as older people are spending time in their homes, that these homes are comfortable and fit for purpose. And with this programme, is a big step towards making that possible. So uh, before I introduce the promotional video, I just have a few people that I'd like to thank on behalf of Sláinte Care and um, our Executive Director, Laura McGahey. Um, who have been very instrumental in getting this programme up and running. So I'd like to thank Meath County Council and their Chief Executive, Jackie Maguire, um, our partners in Age Friendly Ireland and all the staff there, in particular Chief Officer Catherine McGuigan for her tireless work day and night in getting this programme up and running, the local authorities who have come on board to help us roll out this programme, the nine local coordinators who are now already working in their local areas on the ground in the community, the National Programme Manager for Healthy Age Friendly Homes, Mark Harrington, who you'll hear a little bit more from in the, the video. 
our colleagues in the Department of Health, um, both from Slaunch Care and the Older Persons and Social Care Units. Uh, Matt Hornsby has been a very instrumental member from our department um, from the very start. I'd like to thank our academic partners in NUI Maynooth, who will be carrying out the research and evaluation element of this programme, Professors Deirdre Desmond and Joe Larragy. And finally, I'd like to thank the Solstice Theatre here for hosting us today. We'd hoped for a few physical guests today, but we've been very fortunate to have the fantastic staff and support here in the Solstice to deliver this event online. So with that, I'd like to introduce a short promotional video, which will explain a little bit more about the programme and how it'll work. Thank you. Tina, I think we're going to need a bit of sunscreen today. Research shows that the majority of people want to remain in their own home as they age. This desire is often challenged by their home not being suitable as their needs become more pronounced, their financial means decrease and their mobility declines. Any goodies go and check that press I don't know. Yeah, With, the next one there. With the right assessment and intervention, the living environment can be changed from being one of health risk to one of health support. I'm Mark Harrington, the National Manager of the Healthy Age Friendly Home Programme. Our aim is to support older people to live independently with integrated care, collaborating with stakeholders to integrate housing, health and social care services as part of a long-term programme to improve and streamline care for our ageing population. So what is the process involved in helping you access the supports available to enable you stay in your home independently for as long as possible? This is probably that girl, lady. Firstly, a Healthy Age Friendly Homes Coordinator will carry out a needs assessment to establish what supports are required. The coordinator will contact you to arrange a time suitable to call to your home and carry out the needs assessment. You can be referred into the programme through existing services in the community, housing, health, technology, transport, NGO sector and others. Or if you're in the nine participating local authority areas, you can contact your local coordinator in the council. Hi Rosalind, thank you. I'm delighted you were able to reach out to us. Um, my name is Anne Moran. I am the local coordinator for the Healthy Age Friendly Homes programme. They will take a holistic, person-centred approach when assessing your needs, looking at your housing, health, technology and community and social needs. Rosalind, can I ask you, have you any concerns regarding accessing your shower? There's a lip on the shower about getting over... They can provide information on adapting your existing home and the relevant grants available to support you make those changes with a focus on universal design and energy efficiency. Of the slipping and the tiles. They can provide you with access to a range of housing, health and social care supports to help you decide on what you need to enable you live the life you want to the best of your ability within your community. I will draw up an action plan to enable you to support you um, to remain in your own home. There's only myself and Eddie in the house and my arthritis was so bad and Eddie got a bad back helping me up and down the stairs. Things couldn't go on the way they were. And things are an awful lot better and we're an awful lot happier. Perhaps you feel your home is no longer suitable and you would like to move to a more appropriate home. The coordinator can provide you with information on right sizing within your community, county or city. Post assessment, the coordinator will develop a person-centred support plan for you they will provide you with information and signpost you to supports. They will facilitate the process, implement actions and track progress and work with you to enable and empower you to make the decisions that you want. The Healthy Age Friendly Homes programme aims to support older people to live in their own home with dignity and independence for as long as possible. Phase one of the Healthy Age Friendly Homes programme is being rolled out in nine local authorities. Cork County, Dublin City, Fingal County, Galway County and City, Limerick City and County, Longford County, South Dublin, Tipperary County and Westmead County. A local coordinator will case manage a support package for each person referred to the programme, linking the supports from the variety of public, voluntary, private and community agencies in the area. The more people that find out about this, the better. I feel there's people living in circumstances and they're afraid to tell their own families that they're not coping. And this way they, they can get themselves sorted and have a think about things and take their time. Hello everybody. The Healthy Age Friendly Homes programme is a unique collaboration between Slaunch Care and local government that will support people to live longer and healthier lives in their own homes. 
Over the next two years, we'll reach up to 4,500 homes across nine local authorities. The programme is a new opportunity to work directly with older people to develop personal plans to meet their housing, health, energy, technological and social needs. This programme focuses on ageing in place or a home more suited to a person's needs in order that a person can continue to live healthy and connected lives in their own community. This work builds on the joint policy work between the Departments of Health and Housing, the 2019 Housing Options for Ageing Populations. It is a great fit and complements the development of the statutory home care scheme, where we'll build the number of home care support hours, access to reablement programmes and enhance support coordination. One of Slanchgare's key goals is the timely, safe access to care and the promotion of health and well-being. This innovative new programme will deliver on this goal and avoid the premature transition into long-term residential care. These initiatives offer new choices and options for people to continue to live in their own communities, in their own homes, for as long as possible. I'd like to wish this programme well and I look forward to its implementation. Slaunch Care is proud to fund the Age-Friendly Homes programme. We look forward to positive, healthy and sustainable outcomes for all. Thank you. I think that video is just a wonderful, uh, I suppose, collage and montage of, of what this programme has the ability to do. I think the overview of the assessment and the supports that can be delivered in the home are really, really important. Cognizant of the fact that post-pandemic, a lot of older people have told us in Age Friendly Ireland that their preference is to remain at home in their own communities. We believe that this programme really can be the catalyst that is going to enable people to be able to do that. I think it's, um, it's, it's very fitting that the, the housing policy that we developed, that, that you are both ambassadors of ministers, is got a specific action in it related to support coordination. And I know that there are different models and part of the work was sort of saying, what do we need to do in terms of innovation? and that it would be led by both. And one of the things we identified was that a lot of the services that people need in their home are delivered both by local government and the HSE and health services. So in that regard, it's very fitting now that our Chief Executive, Jackie Maguire, will talk to you really about the, the collaboration and the effort that's required to deliver those. Welcome, Jackie. Thank you, Catherine. And at the outset, uh, here, look, Councillor Sean Drew, Ministers Butler and Burke, um, just to extend a very warm welcome to you and indeed to, to all our guests that, that are here online. Um, as well as most of you know at this stage, the Irish Age Friendly Programme has been operational now for, for more than a decade and seeks to bring about positive change for the entire community and for older people in particular. In the past decade, we have consulted with over 25,000 older people and delivered over 11,000 initiatives across the country. Meath County Council adopted the shared service in 2018 and now supports a team-based framework of 31 local age-friendly programmes, 31 age-friendly technical advisors, six regional programme managers, as well as a core team based in Meath County Council. This formal hosting of the National Age Friendly Programme by local government has conferred sustainability on the programme and embedded it into public service delivery. And I'm genuinely delighted to be here today as we launch a new programme in Age Friendly Ireland, the Healthy Age Friendly Homes Programme, which was developed out of a strategic partnership with Slauncha Care in the Department of Health. The Healthy Age Friendly Homes Programme will use the expertise of local authorities to proactively, su to, to proactively support older householders with the ultimate aim of helping them to stay living at home for longer in safer, accessible and more comfortable environments. This is a new departure for local authorities. We in the local authorities have long years of experience in, in building or adapting and retrofitting homes and indeed creating accessible public realm environments. But the Healthy Age Friendly Homes Programme offers us a new opportunity to work directly with the older person to develop personal plans to meet their housing, health, their energy, their technological and their social needs. This approach is highly innovative, with a target of reaching 4,500 householders in the initial two-year pilot phase across the nine sites. This programme is in 
incredibly important in the context of population ageing. In the coming decades, the proportion of older people in the population is set to grow rapidly. Good health is very much related to social and physical environments, whether that be the physical environment of the home, the social connections in the community, or indeed healthy behaviours such as regular exercise. By creating these supportive environments, it enables people to continue doing things that are important to them. Many lessons have been learned during the global pandemic of the past year and a bit. One of the most notable of these was the accelerated opportunity to work together across different sectors, to bring about immediate changes as witnessed in the community call. Local authorities led the community response to COVID-19, which involved working locally with the health services on Garda Síochána, local transport services, community and voluntary groups, sporting organisations, the many volunteers that are out there and indeed businesses, to provide targeted supports to older and at risk members of the community. The framework that developed around this process demonstrated how services can be delivered very effectively in an integrated way. On this project that we are launching here today, we're very fortunate to be working alongside NUI Maynooth as our lead academic partner, who will undertake to evaluate the pilot phase. This evaluation will analyse the impact of the programme in terms of adaptations, energy improvements and access to social services. It will also undertake qualitative research with the service users and programme staff to document the programme's impact on quality of life. Supporting the development of age-friendly environments, and in particular this programme, where local authorities and the HSE work very closely together, will offer an opportunity to best enable older people to remain living independently in their own homes and communities with the correct supports in place. I want to wish the programme and the team every success, and particularly just to acknowledge the huge role that Mark Harrington as the National Programme Manager will play. Um, he's a very, very capable guy, so I have no doubt of the huge success that he will drive the programme forward. And indeed, to welcome all our nine local coordinators, whom of you have already heard from Andrew, that are now in place. And they have been appointed in the nine sites. Mark referenced them on the video, but they are again Cork County, Dublin City, Fingal, Galway County and City, Limerick City and County, Longford, South Dublin, Tipperary and Westmeath. I want to also acknowledge uh, our appreciation to the many stakeholders who are supporting the process at local level. A stakeholder engagement forum has been established in each of the nine sites, engaging with community and voluntary services, the elected members, the HSE teams, on Garda Síochána and many other of the key organisations. And so far, over 300 stakeholders have engaged in the process, which will support both the referrals into the programme and indeed outward referrals to the appropriate services. And this working together across agencies will be critical to the long-term success of the programme. So look, in conclusion, I was, want again to wish the programme every success. I want to particularly thank both Ministers Butler and Burke for taking time out of their agenda to be here today, um, but in particular to thank them for their ongoing support to the age-friendly programme, without which we wouldn't be able to make the strides that we are doing. In particular, our partners in Sláinte Care, Andrew is here today and, and we saw Laura and Kathleen on the video. Um, you know, they very much shared the vision that we have for Age Friendly, but I suppose critically important, they're funding the programme and without the funding, we would not be able to do this. So we really express our sincere gratitude, Andrew, to, to everybody at Sláinte Care. I want to thank and acknowledge my colleagues in local government across all 31 local authorities, but in particular, the nine chief executives who agreed to host their various roles in their own sites. Um, this is phase one of a very ambitious programme, and we would hope to be able to progress to phase two and extend to the wider local government sector across the country. I want to acknowledge all our colleagues in our own parent department of Housing, Local Government and Heritage. They have been a huge support to us and to the programme over the past period of time. Um, indeed, uh, the part our partners in NUI Maynooth, whom we've extremely long, good working relationship, Professor Deirdre Desmond and Joel Largy. Um, but in particular, I want to thank my own staff in the shared service, headed up by Catherine here, and up by all the other staff who work day in, day out to move the, pro 
the programme to the success it has. I want to acknowledge again uh, my own staff and corporate services who have managed to, to put on a, an absolutely spectacular uh, programme here, show should I say, uh, we are here live in the Solstice Theatre, but without all of the background work that goes in, we wouldn't be possible to be able to come live to you today. And I want to, particularly just to acknowledge Belinda, who is the, the, the coordinator of the Solstice Centre for letting us be here in this fabulous uh, theatre this morning. Um, and finally, again, just to wish the programme well, but I do want to thank our Cahirlock, Councillor Sean Drew. Uh, it's one of his first engagements um, as, as the new Cahirlock, so thank him again for taking time to be here. But indeed to all of the elected members, not just in Mead County Council, but across the entire 31 uh, local government sites, um, without whose support we would not be able to, to achieve what we do. And as I think the Cahirlock has said in his opening address, they're very much the link with the older people, with the citizens out there. So there will be a great conduit for, for getting the word out about the programme. So thank you all. And again, just wish the programme every success. Thank you, Jackie. And you're right, Jackie, as well. I mean, the local authorities and their elected representatives have been a marvellous support, but I suppose everything that underpins what we've done over the last decade in Age Friendly Ireland is the authentic voice of older people. Um, I suppose one of our critical success factors is the fact that we have actually asked older people to help us co-design solutions with a diverse approach and an authentic approach. So we'd, we wouldn't be here today if we hadn't heard directly from older people that such a service was needed. And in that regard, we have a short video um, from Kitty Hughes, the chair of our National Network of Older People's Councils, just welcoming the programme and um, on behalf of the older people across the country. Minister Butler and Minister Burke and fellow OPC members. The main thing, message that we want you to take from today is that we want to live in our own homes, safe, healthy, securely, for as long as possible in our communities and be part of the community and participate in our community. But I, ha I have a piece written out here and if you'll bear with me, I'd like to read it to you. It is the dream and dearest wish of all of us to live out our days supported in our own home, among our own people. We live in an age where frequently the likes and opinions of those who shout loudest and push the strongest to define the moves and fashions of the day. Technologically adept and in tune with the zeitgeist, they are the modern day pipe pipers attracting masses of followers, while the less assertive, quietly coping, stumble and struggle to keep in touch in their way. Slowly, the slowing down generation found themselves counted out, out of touch, and dare we say it, out of sight. The growth of care homes boomed. But these older citizens were not to be trifled with. They had plans, dreams to fulfill, and as the poem says, miles to go before we sleep. They found their voice and their own idols and spokesmen and women. Especially, they found it in Age Friendly Ireland, a local government-led program based on the World Health Organization's framework of age-friendly cities and communities. Its aim to give older people a strong voice in decision-making on housing, health, spatial planning, and in all aspects of everyday living, so that policies will be inclusive of the needs and choices of older people both urban and rural. We have been advancing slowly since. And as Madeleine Albright said, it took me a long time to develop a voice, but now that I have it, I'm not going to be silent. The establishment of Older People's Councils in Ireland is at the heart of a positive ageing strategy to ensure that Irish society is an age-friendly one in which to grow older. The chairpersons of the 31 Older People's Councils in Ireland make up the national network of OPCs, of which I have the honour to be chair, and today attend this launch of the National Healthy Age-Friendly Homes Programme, a programme developed through partnership between local government and the Department of Health Launch of Care that aims to support older people to live in their own home with dignity and independence for as long as possible. 
We want to live in our own homes, homes we saved for, built, raised family. It's where we belong, it's who we are and what we are and from whence we came. There will be times when, perhaps due to decreased mobility, our homes may be no longer suitable or could it be that our house is just too big for our needs? Having the right information will enable us to make the right decisions at the right time. We have taken part in surveys and seminars on housing and healthcare, and we continue to attend webinars and Zoom workshops on housing and planning, healthcare, community works. Our voice is now part of the programme. The nine pilot areas will have a local coordinator who will case manage a supporting package for an older person and give some extra help to allow them continue to live in their own home. Supporting older people to live in their own homes will benefit not only the person, but the whole family. Pope Francis, a man of over 80 years said, by isolating the elderly and leaving them in the care of others, without the closeness and concern of family members, we disfigure and impoverish the family itself. Adding that removing the elderly from the family circle, it deprived young people of a necessary connection to their roots and a wisdom that the young cannot achieve on their own. The trauma of the elderly in care homes during the recent COVID restrictions saw the heartbreak of window visits to grandparents who spent their days in isolation. Being able to live in appropriate housing with access to health and social care services will improve the health and ensure older people stay close to their families and also they can actively participate in their communities. So we need to design homes for all ages, address the housing needs of the diverse current older population and implement policies to provide responsive physical and solid solutions to meet these needs. Today is a step in the right direction. We, the members of age-friendly old, older people's councils, will walk with you. We'll open your eyes to the necessary design criteria, criteria for coping with all ages. In olden times, way before my time, a wife was carried over the threshold into her new home. And in the old days in rural Ireland, there was a half door to let the light in and the fresh air. They're advocating that strategy now to keep COVID out, ventilation. But we also need Wi-Fi and good broadband to keep in touch and design that permits assistive technology and home care robotics that will support those less mobile to reside in their own homes. And remember, just because a person carries a walking cane does not mean they lack intelligence. So congratulations, Minister Butler and Minister Burke, on this small step for healthy, age-friendly homes. Now that you've stared up the steps, we can step up stairs together, with a handrail, of course. Garamila Mahagiv, Agus Gunairiam Bohar Lives. Well, that was something else. Um, I think we'll agree. Um, if we had the audience here, that would get a, an uproarious applause. We, we always say that Kitty is a very, very hard act to follow, Minister, so it's, it's, it's up to you now. But I think in terms of representing the voice of older people, we couldn't ask for better. better. Um, Minister uh, Burke, uh, Kitty is not only the chair of the National Network of Older People's Councils, but she's also the chair of the Longford Older People's Council from your own constituency and flies that flag very, very well and very proud of her roots. So we think she's great. And I think if nothing else is substantiates what we're trying to do when we hear from the voice of older people of how much this is needed. So our thanks to Kitty from everybody here today. So we're moving now to our official launch. Um, we're uh, delighted to be uh, calling on the two ministers. 
again, their ambassadorial role towards Age Friendly Ireland and championing the issues for older people has been uh, second to none since they've taken up office. And I think in advance of that, both ministers, uh, as everybody has, but I want to thank you both for the fantastic work you've been doing. Um, <clears throat> We've, been, um, we've had to call on you many, many times for your support and a lot of hidden work that people don't see. And we really appreciate all the work you're doing as a public representative on behalf of older people in Ireland. So without further ado, first I'll call on uh, Minister Peter Burke from the Department of Housing, Local Government and Heritage to do his part of the official launch. Welcome, Minister. Thank you, Catherine. Cahirlach, Sean. Uh, Jackie from uh, Mead County Council, Minister Butler and Catherine, it's great to have everyone here uh, this afternoon to launch this very important strategy. As Minister for State with Responsibility for Local Government and Planning, I am truly delighted to be here to officially launch Healthy Age Friendly Homes programme from the Solstice Arts Theatre in Navan. I am struck by the message on the theatre's website which says that the Arts Centre is here more than a building, it is a place of life and celebration where each day brings new opportunities to be inspired and to connect. Our purpose here today chimes very well with such a message as we launch a programme to support older people to have a great life in an age-friendly Ireland which allows them to be able to make the most of opportunities and to support them into their future. This is a programme which puts the needs of older people front and centre in a holistic but comprehensive way to ensure that they get the care that they need, when they need it, from services they trust from within their own communities. Many of you will have heard me say before that, as a government, we are committed to providing the resources to allow, allow older people age in place, and today is a key date in the achievement of that objective. We know that ageing in place is the best policy for older people because the global research on the needs and wishes of older people tells us so, as to do our own citizens time and time again. It is therefore our responsibility as a society to listen to the voices of our older people and to frame our public policy to provide the kind of society that values their lives and experiences. The Age Friendly Homes programme is a fitting response to this call and I am very proud to be associated with it. Our programme for government published in July 2020 recognises the fundamental interaction of health and housing in the development of an age-friendly Ireland within our overall globe goal of improving quality of life for all our citizens. The programme's commitments on older people include supporting older people to live in their own home with dignity and independence for as long as possible as well as providing them with more housing options in their own communities, enabling older people to live longer and healthier lives, allowing older people to stay, to stay close to their families and actively participate in their communities, and embedding ageing in place options for older people in our planning local level. The key to the achievement of all these aims is effective planning and collaboration between all of the agencies that deliver these services at a local level. Of these agencies, local authorities have the deepest roots in the community and as such are ideally placed to implement the Healthy Age Friendly Homes programme as an element of Age Friendly Ireland programme. As you're all aware, Age Friendly Ireland is a local authority shared service hosted here in Mead County Council and dedicated to implementing the World Health Organisation Age Friendly programme in Ireland. The shared service model has become an intrinsic part of public service reform in Ireland. An examination of the model carried out by the Department of Public Expenditure and Reform in 2015 expressed the view that the shared service model works best when it creates a compelling vision that evolves with the challenging and changing needs of stakeholders. From what I have learned of the work and achievements of Age Friendly Ireland, working with its partners in government, departments and in the HSE, it has certainly done that and even more. The Health Age Friendly Homes programme is another of these excellent and innovative projects which has huge potential to address many further issues relating to housing and health for our ageing population that are well known to policymakers and those involved in service delivery. Issues such as the need for housing adaptations to enable older persons live well in their existing home, future-proofing housing for ageing, improving energy efficiency in older housing stock, 
addressing under occupancy by supporting the various options around right sizing and implementing the supports older people need. These could be summarised as both practical interventions in the living environment and health and social supports to enable an older person to remain living comfortably in their own home for as long as possible. The Age Friendly Homes programme will be an instrument to address these for individual older people in a personal but comprehensive manner. For some older people, indeed for many people of all ages, the systems of public administration can be difficult to access, particularly in the past year or so. Whether those referred into this service need support for applying for housing adaptations to local authority, assistive technology, energy efficiency measures, or support to address loneliness or accessing healthcare services, the programme will enable and empower them to navigate through this process. My department is responsible for significant funding streams which will support this work, including €75 million Euro investment in retrofitting local authority homes through the Housing Adaptation Grants, €23 million in funding for Disabled Person Grant Scheme and improvement works in lieu of social housing, a National Energy Refit Programme to the value of €65 million, Euro, which is made up of €20 million Euro for the Midlands Refit Programme, and €45 million Euro for the 2021 Energy Efficiency Retrofit Programme. Additionally, significant funding streams from Departments of Environment, Climate and Communications through the Sustainable Energy Ireland, such as Warmer Homes Scheme, will complement these resources available for this programme. The programme for government commits to retrofitting 500,000 homes to a B2 cost optimal equivalent BR standard by 2030. Working with SEAI, the Healthy Age Friendly Homes Programme will help support housing assessments and related works. Research carried out by Age Friendly Ireland last year in relation to older people's perceptions and experiences of right sizing showed that energy efficient home was one of their top priorities. 98% specified their desire for a more energy efficient home in considering a move in later life. Since 2019, my department has been actively working with a number of partners, including Age Friendly Ireland, to implement the actions of the Housing Options for Our Ageing Populations Policy. I am pleased to report that there have been many positive developments from this policy, such as 31 friendly housing technical advisors assigned in every local authority, increased funding for our housing adaptation grants, the development of our housing needs demand assessment tool, the recent launch of a suite of practical resources, guides and recommendations to promote the growth of age-friendly homes in Ireland, including a home rating tool, age-friendly principles for county development plans, a guide to right sizing and others. The recently launched agefriendlyhomes.ie website, research studies on mature homeowners and right sizing. The new housing need and demand assessment tool allows local authorities to analyse demographic trends and population projections to gain a better understanding of the needs and location of housing options for older people. This support tool will be a significant resource for our age-friendly technical advisors, but also the wider local government staff involved in city and county development plans. It will inform them and help other local plans and strategies in the context of population growth and demographic change. It is vital that we provide housing in the right locations for all our citizens, but in particular for older people who must be near the services that they need. The forthcoming Housing for All policy will be an overarching framework for housing policy in relation to land availability, the delivery of infrastructure, building quality, building standards and regulation, the policy will ensure that the local authorities are central to delivering housing, and in that context, the housing needs of older people will be addressed. Alongside that, this Healthy Age Friendly Homes programme will provide a means to accelerate the identification of need and delivery of supports, lending to better health outcomes for older people and the development of age-friendly communities that are able to support older people to remain healthy and age in place. Healthy age-friendly homes will deliver practical interventions such as reducing hazards in their homes, addressing cold conditions, reducing energy costs and generally helping to make living environment more manageable for older householders. We all want to have an easy to manage home that is warm and dry as we age 
and to be as healthy as possible so we can use our time to enjoy life, to celebrate and connect in our communities as we are doing here today. The past 16 months have shown us that feeling a part of our community and feeling to be a part of our community and being connected to others is so intrinsic for a full life. As policymakers and service providers, we must do all we can to put the structures in place to facilitate this for all our citizens. Age-friendly homes does just that. I want to commend all of our local authorities who submitted expressions of interest to participate in this programme. We know that the key purpose of local government is to promote the well-being and quality of life of citizens and communities through effective, accountable representation and efficient performance of functions and the delivery of services. For citizens, the delivery of services by local authorities has huge advantages over more centralised provision of services, are best delivered by locally based bodies that are responsive to local needs, local responsibility and accountability subject to overall standards and oversight can help and achieve good performance, greater commitment and ownership. Your willingness to be involved in this programme shows that you're forward thinking, willing to get involved in such projects and is good for our older citizens and thereby all of our citizens in the longer term and we're very grateful to those local authorities. And I'm delighted to see Longford and Westmead and my own constituency and Kitty in terms of the great presentation that she made here to us all being so central to that. In conclusion, I would like to thank Minister Mary Butler and her colleagues in the Department of Health and particularly Laura McGahey, Executive Director in Staunch Care, who had the vision to fund this innovative programme, and Andrew for his presentation uh, earlier. Chief Executive Jackie and her staff here in Mead County Council for their absolutely exemplary work in this regard. The age-friendly Ireland shared service so effectively led by Catherine McGuigan, as we all can attest to her commitment and hard work. The nine local authorities who are participating in the first phase of Healthy Age-Friendly Homes programme. Staff my own department who have led the implementation of this work in this area so progressively and positively. Colleagues in the, in the Department of Environment, Climate, Communications, the HSC and Sustainable Energy Ireland for their crucial partnership role in the delivery of this programme. To all our online attendees today, including the practitioners who are managing local age-friendly programmes, including 31 programme managers and the technical advisors and their alliance members, all involved in implementing these local actions. Finally, to all our older people's councils across Ireland who are working towards making this a great country to live and grow older. And for everyone watching in and our older people's councils, it's so important that we really value and learn from lived experiences because that essentially gives us the best chance to put the best policy in place to, res to respond to everyone's needs. I wish to thank and I wish everyone here the very best in terms of the work and the huge amount of work we have to do in the future and I did listen to our Cahirlock and heard his ask in terms of housing for all and we will be obviously following up on that which we expect to be announced in the next 10 days. And uh, finally, uh, along with uh, Minister Mary Bot Butler, I'm delighted to uh, launch this programme today and wish everyone the very best in the future and look forward to seeing you all soon, hopefully in person. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Burke, and it will now call on Minister Butler to do her part of the official launch. Thank you, Minister Butler. Dear Gwyd Gulair, as Minister of State for Mental Health and Older People, it is my absolute pleasure to once again join you today to launch the Healthy Age Friendly Homes Programme at this fantastic solstice art theatre here in Navan. Um, it is my first visit to Navan and I know it won't be my last. And I just want to thank everyone for the warm welcome today. At the outset, I would like to acknowledge my colleague, Minister Burke from the Department of Housing and Local Government and Heritage, Councillor Sean Drew, uh, Cahirlock of Mead County Council. And I would like to wish Sean and all the Cahirlocks and mayors throughout the country that have taken up their new, new role, I would like to wish you all the best for the year ahead. It's a huge honour for you and your family. Um, I would like to acknowledge and thank again Jackie Maguire, Chief Executive of Mead County Council, and Catherine McGuigan, Chief Officer of Age Friendly Ireland, for hosting the shared service and all the work and initiative that you are putting into this. I genuinely want to thank you for that. And I also want to welcome Andrew here from Schlauncher Care and thank you for your presentation earlier. 
What is the National Healthy Age Friendly Homes Programme? So to put it quite simply, the aim of the programme is to support older people to remain living in their own homes or a home more suitable to their needs through the provision of targeted supports. And that's what we all want to achieve. And I want to thank Sloan to Care for funding this initiative. We are living longer and we should embrace that. Our population is ageing and I always say 60 is the new 50. But it is essential that we transform our health services to support older people to live independently, with dignity, in their own homes and communities for as long as possible. The programme for government agreed in July 2020 pledges a mission of universal health care, which includes a commitment to accelerating the implementation of Sláinte Care, the health reform programme, and it also sets out a vision for an age-friendly Ireland. It commits to continued investment in healthcare infrastructure in line with Project Ireland 2040. The programme for government's ambition is to enable everyone to live longer, healthier lives by keeping care close to home and expanding the range of health and social care services in the community. This is particularly important for older people who access these services more frequently. Access to local health and social care services can improve health outcomes and also ensure that older people remain close to their families and are able to participate in their communities. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought into sharp focus the vulnerabilities of many older people, especially those living in long-term residential care. The pandemic has borne down hard, particularly hard, on this group of people. And I think today I would like to remember each and every one of our loved ones um, that lost their lives in the last uh, 16 months. Long-term residential care can sometimes be the most appropriate care option, particularly when an older person's needs are complex. And long-term residential care facilities will continue to play an important role in our care system. However, in line with Schlaunche Care, the programme for government, and learnings from the pandemic, we must do everything we can to support older people to live in their own homes, to age well in their own homes. The focus now is to deliver a new model of integrated older person services, supporting people to be cared for at home and in their communities across a care continuum as part of the Enhanced Community Care Programme. This includes minimising referrals and admissions to acute settings, or when admitted, facilitating discharge through a designated pathway in order to maximise the potential for remaining at home and in turn reducing the requirement for long-term residential care. In line with the HSE's Enhanced Community Care Programme, 32 community specialist teams for older people will commence operation in 2021 in two phases. The Healthy Age Friendly Homes Programme being launched today is a very important part of delivery on this policy. Older people's quality of life and their health can depend on the appropriateness of their home environment the conditions in which they live and the services that they have access to. As we think about later life, most of us would prefer to stay as long as possible in our own homes, surrounded by friends, loved ones and the familiar setting of our community. This programme aims to support people to do just that, to live in their own home with dignity and independence for as long as possible, avoiding the premature transition into long-term residential care. Many people can stay living in their own homes as they age. However, for a variety of reasons, whether it's quality of housing, inappropriate design, the absence of sufficient community-based supports, lack of access to services, chronic age-related conditions, they can face challenges in being able to age comfortably in the community they belong to. Through the Healthy Age Friendly Homes programme, the local coordinator will support older people and their families to navigate the services by proactively linking with their colleagues within local authorities who have responsibility for housing and planning in order to develop housing options for older people within their local authority, maximise the opportunity for SEAI warmth and well-being homes, maximise the opportunity for advanced retrofit of homes, 
identify suitable opportunities for development of step-down housing alternatives or, su or supported community housing schemes, feeding into city and county development plans to ensure housing options are embedded for the future. In addition to this programme, throughout 2021, there will be a focus on a very considerable expansion of home care and community supports for older people. The home first approach will enable older people to live independently in their own homes for as long as possible as part of an integrated community model. But you need the correct wraparound supports. Five million additional home support hours will be provided for in communities across Ireland this year. 632 million euro was allocated in funding in 2021 and will provide a total of 24 million hours of home support. In line with the Department of Health's policy and direction, the HSE will also progress the development of a reformed model of service delivery for home support. This work will include the continued rollout of InterI as the standard tool for assessing the care needs of older people in the community, the establishment of a national home support office and the testing of a reformed model of service delivery. The pilot of a reformed model of service delivery is due to commence in 21 to support ongoing work towards the statutory home support scheme. The COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the importance of supporting our most vulnerable people in society to be cared for in their own homes for as long as possible. It is of the utmost importance that all individuals availing of home support are provided with a consistent, high quality level of care which is safe, effective and person-centred. In this regard, the Department is currently developing a regulatory framework for home support providers with the aim of ensuring that all service users are provided with a standard, high quality level of care. This framework will compromise, sorry, will comprise primary legislation for the licensing of providers, minimum requirements and HICWA national standards. The scheme of regulation will ensure public confidence in the services provided, as well as safeguarding service users. Dedicated funding has been allocated in 2021 to enhance community-based supports for people living with dementia, including the expansion of the in-home daycare, enhancement of memory technology resource rooms, and the appointment of additional dementia advisors, of which there will be 29 in place by the end of this year. The 2019 Joint Policy Statement, Housing Option for Our Ageing Population, provides a framework to support older people in a way that will increase housing options available and give meaningful choice in how and where people choose to live as they age. And as Minister for Older People, I always remember every day when I go about my job that we always must remember that older people have a voice and they have a choice. Activity is progressing through the implementation group and its subgroups, whose work has been extended to the end of 21. Today's launch is a further example of how we are taking steps to enhance housing options and living conditions for our older people. I would like to congratulate everyone involved in this programme, and in particular I would like to thank members of my own department, who are working closely with the Department of Housing, Heritage and Local Government, I would like to thank Minister Burke for his tireless work on this and I would also like to thank Sláinte Care, led by Laura McGahey and her team, including Andrew, who have done Trojan work. Again, I want to acknowledge Jackie Maguire as host of the Shared Services and her colleagues, um, including Catherine. And I want to acknowledge the chief executives in every local government across Ireland and all the local authorities for the ongoing work. But most importantly, the star of the show today, in my opinion, the members of the Older People's Councils, I want to acknowledge Kitty Hughes, the chair of the National Network. And Kitty, I listened intently to what you had to say, and you spoke so much sense. The Older People's Councils have worked for over a decade with programme implementation, providing their voices and helping us to shape a better Ireland for us all. So I look forward to working with you all on the full implementation of this programme to ensure older people are supported to live at home, in their own communities, independently and with dignity for as long as possible. So once again, with my colleague Minister Burke, I would like to launch the Healthy Age Friendly Homes programme. Gaurav Mila Mahagukulir.
Thank you, Minister Butler. So that brings us to the end of our proceedings. Um, just without further ado, I'd like to thank everybody that has made today possible. I'd like to thank Minister Butler, Minister Burke, Kehorluk, uh, Sean Drew for being here today and for the welcome address, Chief Executive Jackie, Andrew, and obviously Kitty Hughes for the fantastic work she did. And I noted, Minister, she made a direct, uh, she directed her conversation at both ministers, so she's uh, absolutely, and, and, I, and I think that was point well made. They're fantastic, the, the councils around the country, as you know. I'd just like to say before we close, thank you everybody for, who has joined us online today. It will be available to watch back, but I know that the video will be a key promotional piece so that we can raise awareness of the Healthy Age Friendly pro Programme. It's really important that people refer into it and that we can actually signpost people to services so that we will deliver over the next 23, 24 months until we reach the next level of scale. Today wouldn't have been possible without a lot of hidden work going on in the background. So without reiterating everybody's thank yous, I do want to acknowledge the staff in the shared service, our own Director of Services, Barry Lynch, who's here today, the staff, uh, Sylvia, who unfortunately isn't here today, but who put a lot of work in before she took her, her leave, and all the team, Rachel, Emer, Kira, and everybody involved. I especially myself would like to welcome Mark and the nine coordinators uh, without listing everybody by name, but they've a, they have an ambitious programme to deliver over the next 24 months and I really wish them well with, uh, with that. And finally, I'd like to say thank you to Robert and Audrey and Ailish and everybody in corporate services in, in Meath who worked very, very hard to make um, this beautiful place available to us today and uh, Belinda, obviously, for hosting us. So thank you to everybody uh, for making today possible and we will keep you posted and look forward to um, updating you on the progress of the Healthy Age Friendly pro pro programmes. Thank you, everybody.